Welcome back. My name is Jen McGee, and I am so excited to be here today as we continue our series, Into the Unknown. You know, each week and each day, we're gaining more and more understanding of what this uncertain time looks like and what we can expect. But the truth is, there's still so much unknown, and we're always going to be asking the question, how do I deal with this unknown? How do I deal with this situation, this season of uncertain times? Whether you know it or not, your parents, your grandparents, the people who are raising you, your step parents, your aunts and uncles, they've influenced the way that you handle the unknown. Just like you've learned how to cut your sandwich, right? Maybe you're cutting it in half, maybe on the diagonal, maybe in four squares. You learned that from someone. Someone influenced the way you cut your sandwich and you probably don't even think about it. You just naturally cut your sandwich. Well, the same is true with how we deal with the unknown. We've learned the way to handle this, handle these kind of situations from those who have influenced us. And so this week, we're gonna look at two generations of people. Back in history, we're gonna look at how they face the unknown and how their stories are totally different and what we can learn from both of them. Our stories begin with Moses. See, Moses was chosen by God to pull the Israelites out of Egypt, out of slavery, and enter into this land, this promised land that God had given them. This was gonna be their home, it would be their nation, and it would be their future. And so as they're wandering to the land and they get to this land, Moses, he's left and he's charged. He's like, I'm gonna send these spies in to see the land, make sure we're good to go, because after all, it's super unknown. We doesn't know what to expect, but God has said that we could do this. And so let's look at what happens for Moses as he sends spies into the land to see what's going on and can we do this. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, it begins with, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do this. But then the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack these people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report that the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours the living in it, and all the people we saw there are of great size. So here's Moses and this generation of people, and God has told them, trust me, go into the promised land. I will protect you. I will provide this land for you. But they're left with fear. They're left with, you know, half of the spies saying we can do it, but the other spies are saying we can't. And so Moses is faced with, what do I do? Do I trust God and enter in this land, or do I trust these spies who say we can't do it? We're not strong enough. And you know what? Moses and this generation, they didn't trust God. And so they were left with 40 more years of wandering in the desert, in the wilderness, without a home and without a nation. Fast forward 40 years and Joshua is ready to enter the promised land that God had provided for he and his generation. He sends spies into the land just like Moses, but here's what they came back to say. In Joshua 2, 24, they said to Joshua, the Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. What a difference. I mean, here's Joshua and Moses tasked with the same thing. Leave the wilderness, trust God, enter the land. And they approach it totally different. So what happened? What changed for Joshua's generation? And the thing is that Joshua and his generation had spent 40 years watching their parents not trust God. But they had watched God continue to provide for them and protect them. They continued to watch God have a plan, God have the details, and God protect them along the way. You see, Joshua and his generation, they didn't need to know all the details of how they were going to take this land. They didn't know all the, need to know all the details of how they were actually going to get to the goodness of this land, get to the end of God's plan. But they knew that they could trust God. They had learned that along the way while walking in the wilderness that God was there with them, that God never left them, and that God provided for them. So Joshua and his crew, they didn't have the details, right? And that's kind of true for us in this season. We don't know the details of the unknown. We don't know the details of how we're going to get to the end of the season and what life will look like. But we know that we can trust God. In fact, you probably do this in your life without even realizing it. Realizing it. I know I do. Every time I get on an airplane, I trust the pilot. I may not say that out loud. I may not actively know I'm even doing that. But I get on that plane and I know that I'm going to get to my destination safely. Do I know the details of how the plane is flying? 
No. Do I know how fast it's going? Do I know what altitude we're at? Do I know really even the path we're taking? I have no idea, but I am trusting that the pilot has done his job, that he is protecting me, that he is gonna get me safely to my destination. He's gonna do whatever he can to get me there. And so what does that look like? How do we trust God in the season? How do we trust that his plan is good? Because after all, being the center of God's plan, his good plan, man, that's the best place to be, right? And what would it look like if we trusted God with that? If we trusted God in this season, what would our homes look like? What would our small groups look like? What would our friends groups look like? How would we be on the other side of this season if we trusted God with the details and we trusted that He was in control and we trusted that He had a plan? So as we continue in this season of unknown, I wanna challenge you with that. I wanna challenge you to trust God, to trust that He has a plan, to trust that His plan is good and trust that He's got the details under control, that He's gonna see us through to the end. And so today in small group, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about how scary that could be, but also what could it be to trust God? What could it look like to trust God? We'll see you next week.